Hello great hosts, welcome to Educate. Let us talk about evolution by natural selection. Okay, so now let us first uh, try to understand what is evolution. So the term evolution, we usually define biological evolution in grade 12. So we say that biological evolution, it is the change. It is the change in the characteristics of species over time. So now scientists believe that um, we have evolved from something that is different from what we are right now. So now the thing is, we're not talking about evolution. We are just talking about how the characteristics of our ancestors changed. Uh, yeah, how, how the characteristics of our ancestors changed to make us. So right now, if we compare ourselves to our old ancestors, I'm not talking about your, your 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 recent grandmas. No, I'm talking about very 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 old ancestors. Uh, the theory of evolution just tries to say that they were different from us in terms of the characteristics. So the change that occurred, uh, uh, yes, the change that occurred, so that uh, we can be what we are, it is known as biological evolution. So this is how you define it according to the examination guidelines. It is the biological evolution is the change in the characteristics of species over time. So now these are other definitions that you need to know. A theory versus a hypothesis. So now what is a theory? So when we say that we're talking about a theory, it is just a widely accepted explanation of an observation which can be tested and verified by facts. So now we need to know that for us to say that there is a scientific theory, we need um, to test it and verify it using facts. For example, um, this theory, we say this is the theory of evolution because there are certain facts and evidences that have been used to prove that indeed evolution took place. <clears throat> so it is verified by facts. Whereas a hypothesis, a hypothesis is just an observation of a natural phenomena which is not supported or which cannot be proved by any facts. So if I bring up a hypothesis, let's just say, I can just say maybe um, a human can fly. It is just my observation. Let us just say I saw a human fly. I'm just assuming. And then now, if we want facts or if we want evidence that humans can really fly, we don't really find any evidence that humans can fly. So we can say that's a hypothesis, just like the witchcraft thingy. Yeah, sort of. So now we need to know the differences between these two things. A theory, it is proven by a certain uh, facts and evidence. It is tested, whereas a hypothesis, it is not supported by any facts. Then now, let's now delve into the theory of evolution. So since we say that the theory of evolution is a theory, remember we've said that a theory has to be supported by evidence, has to be supported by facts. Yeah, it must be something true. So now, what is the evidence that evolution really took place? Because... Um, because it is believed that evolution took place. So now what are the evidences? So we have got four main types of evidences that prove evolution. It is the fossils, the fossils, the biogeography, the homologous structures or otherwise known as modification by descent as well as genetics. So these are the four things that you need to provide when an exam question asks you what are the evidences for evolution. So it is fossils, biogeography, homologous structures, as well as genetics. But you should also know how to explain them. How, why do we say fossils are an evidence for evolution? Why do we say biogeography is an evidence? So I need to explain each and every uh, factor as to how is it an evidence or maybe how is it proving that evolution really took place. So now let us look at the first factor, the fossils. So fossils, what are fossils first of all? You might know this from grade 10 because that's when fossils were introduced. So now fossils are, are remains. These are remains of old species 
that are usually found in rocks. So when I'm talking about the remains, it is just uh, the, 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 the bones, like, yeah, we just know them as the bones. So when, when a certain animal or when a certain human being passes on, well, the remains, that, those are the fossils, okay? So fossils are the remains of old species that are usually found in rocks. So how did fossil how how do fossils prove that evolution really took place? So now different fossils were found in different rocks. Please note this point is on mark on its own because it explains. So now different fossils, different fossils were found in different rocks. So now the oldest fossils which were found in the oldest rocks. Of course, if you see an old rock, you will know that um, the fossils or the remains that you find in those rocks are also old. Okay, so do not really worry too much on how do we see the age of a rock, but we just say that if we have got an oldest rock, it has got, and we see fossils in it, or we see bones or remains in it, we say those fossils are also old. So now, the, um, the oldest fossils were found in oldest rock and those oldest fossils were simple and the modern ones were complex. So now what is the statement trying to tell us? So now the thing is um, when scientists were trying to prove evolution, they found fossils or remains or bones. Let's just say bones to make it simple. So they found bones of old species that looked like us humans, but then they were simple, okay? So when I'm saying that they were simple, it just means that they did not have many complex organs, okay? Maybe they did not have eyes, maybe they did not have ears, maybe they didn't, they didn't even have a leg. So when I'm just trying to say simple, we're trying to say that they did not have any special organs, or maybe their skeletons looked like that. It's just an assumption. Remember, even if we say that is a theory, no one was there to see it happen. So we are just observing from what we have, which is the fossil. So the fossils were simple, and then the modern, the modern ones. When we're talking about the modern fossils, is it, I, I'm sure we say that um, we see the oldest fossils in the oldest rocks. So it means the modern ones or the newer fossils they are found in the newer rocks. So the newer fossils were found to be complex. They were found to have uh, complex body organs. So this change, so scientists assumed that since the oldest fossils were simple and the modern fossils were complex in terms of their body parts, so this change it is known as modification by descent. So the word modification by descent it is um it is just trying to say that okay maybe they, in other textbooks they say they can say descent with modification it is still referring to the same thing so fossils um fossils were different that that, 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 that is just the explanation of fossils they're just explaining that oldest fossils that are found in oldest rocks were simple and modern ones or the newer fossils were found to be complex so this change is known as modification by descent. So with that, scientists took it as an evidence that evolution really did happen. So now let us look at the second factor, the second evidence for evolution, biogeography. So now let us try to understand what is biogeography. So you can hear the word geography and you can hear the word bio. So now biogeography is just the study of where species are found and why they are found there. So the study of where a species found and why are they found in that certain place. So scientists do study where do we find an ostrich? Why do we find an ostrich where it is? For example, we find um, a polar bear in snow because it is adapted to live in snow. We find a lion inside the forest in a way and then why is it there? Because it is adapted to live there. See? So now, by, that's biogeography. So now, how did that, how is that even an evidence for evolution? So now, biogeography says that uh, the different combinations of animals have been found 
different combinations or different types of animals have been found in the same area. So with that, scientists uh, assumed that if we find two different species in the same area, it means they might have shared a common ancestor, meaning that they might have developed or evolved from the same species in a way. So now the thing is that is biogeography. These are factors you don't really need to explain as much into them. They are, they are I, I doubt that they can ask a lot about these vectors, uh, these factors in the examination, but you need to also know them as well, just in case. And then now, let us go to genetics. So genetics is the analysis of genes. So remember, we did uh, genetics and inheritance earlier on. So now, genetics, we're just analyzing the genes and the DNA structure. So using this analysis of genes and DNA structures, um, scientists have been able to also consider this as a proof for evolution. So now the thing is, um, scientists did an analysis on the DNA of human beings and the DNA of apes, apes like those uh, those monkeys and whatnot. And then they found out that they've, they are identical. So identical DNA structure, it is a proof for uh, evolution, that evolution took place. So, so this is just trying to say that we are kind of related or oh, species with DNA ident with identical DNA structures are related. Just like us and monkeys, we are said to be related because we have got uh, the DNA structures that are almost the same, okay, as well as the similar sequence of genes. So genes, remember that the genes are the ones that code for our characteristics. So now, if they analyzed the genes of a monkey and they analyzed the genes of humans, they had a similar sequence, the way they were arranged. They were arranged in a similar way. So now, this is trying to say that we are related to them in a way. So this is just genetic evidence as well as similar mutations. Remember, when mutations are occurring, it just means that uh, the, the, the gene structure is changing. So they they did observations on the gene or on the mutations in human DNA as well as mutations in other DNA and they found that those were closely related or similar. So now that tries to suggest that we are closely related to all those species. Okay. So now these are the factors that affect evolution. You might have seen I've skipped this uh, part, the homologous structures. So the homologous structures is not really hard to explain. Homologous structures, the word homologous just means that are uh, similar. So when you're saying that similar structures, we're just talking about uh, similar structures that are found in different species. How do I mean? For example, um, let's just say this is the, um, this is the arm of a chimpanzee. This is the arm of a chimpanzee. This is just a, a skeleton of the arm of a chimpanzee. And then this is a skeleton of the arm of a human being. I'm not that good at drawing, but then I'm just trying to make an example. So you can see that these are almost the same. So we say these structures are homologous. So this is just trying to suggest that these two structures developed from a common ancestor. When you're saying that a common ancestor, it just means that um, these two species came from the same species. It, like it came from the same species and then it developed into different things. That's the, that is the evolution. Remember, evolution is the changing over time. So now that's how it goes. <coughs> so now let's look at uh, the concept of variation. So now, even though we might have the same species, like for example, humans, but then we tend to be different. But then, before we get there, let us just uh, know how do we define the word species. So species are similar organisms that can interpret to produce fertile offspring. So this definition is usually three marks and you need to know how to define it exactly as stated. Similar organisms, they are, they are similar. They can interpret when you're saying that they can interpret it just means that they can they can make a baby in a sense and then to produce fertile 
offspring, it just means that the offspring produced must be able to produce as well, must be fertile. So this definition is three marks. Make sure that you get it. And then a population is a group of species that are occupying the same habitat at the same time. Okay, maybe the other definitions can add the word can interpret as well. So just make sure to include it. But then a population is just a group of species that are found in the same place at the same time. So now we say that um, there is variation. We say that there is variation within species. As humans, we might all be humans, but then we are not alike. We are not the same. For example, if we can take a, a dark-skinned person, it's not the same as a light-skinned person. It's not the same as um, it's not the same as it's not the same as yeah. Let's just say that yeah, a dark-skinned, a light-skinned. We have got different types of noses. All of us are humans, indeed. We are the same species because we are similar organisms. We can interbreed. We can produce fertile offspring. But then the thing is, we are different. So now, what causes this variation? Uh, what causes this variation? So we have got four factors, meiosis, mutations, random fertilization, as well as random mating. So there, as well as random mating. So now we need just to know to explain this thing of meiosis and also the thing of mutations. Random fertilization and random mating is not really anything big, but we need to know how does meiosis cause variation within the same species as well as how do mutations how do mutations cause variation within the same species so now let's look at meiosis what is meiosis remember the meiosis is just the process that you did earlier on in your grade 12 whereby uh, there is a production of sperm cells and egg cells or the pro let's just say the production of gametes Remember that for you to exist, you came from the combination of the two. You came from the combination of an ovum, you did that in reproduction, and a sperm cell. So now, remember that for you to create a, an ovum and a sperm cell, this ovum was created through the process of meiosis, as well as this sperm cell as well. All of them were created through the process of meiosis. So now, during meiosis, remember that um, there is a process known as crossing over during prophase 1 of meiosis. So now, how does this process contribute to, 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 to variation or to the difference between species? How does crossing over make us to look different? I'm dark-skinned. I, I, I already exposed something. I'm dark-skinned, but someone else is light-skinned. How are we different? So now, during crossing over, remember that chromosomes exchange genetic material. So chromosomes exchange genetic material. So when they exchange genetic material, for example, let's just say if your body is creating sperm cells, the chromosomes of your mom and the chromosomes of your dad will cross over at the chiasma. So it means that uh, your sperm cells will have a combination of your mom and your dad. Yes, that is why sometimes you can say that your child will be very alike to your grandma. But then that is more involved in genetic and inheritance. So now, we just need to explain that uh, this leads to genetic ev ev variation. Because if, if, if there's an exchange of genetic material, let us just say I'm dark-skinned uh, and somebody else is light-skinned. And then we make a baby. That baby is going to be intermediate sometimes. The baby is going to be not dark-skinned, not light-skinned, be in between the two of us. So why is that? Because there's been an exchange of genetic material. And if you notice, that baby is different from us. That is whole, all about variation. Variation is difference. Is the differences within the same species. We are still the same species, but there's a difference in how we look. So now, the other factor in meiosis that causes a uh, variation to okay, it is the random arrangement of chromosomes at the equator. So remember that uh, during metaphase 1 and metaphase 2, chromosomes or chromatids, they arrange themselves at the center of the cell, 
or they arrange it themselves at the equator. So this process happens randomly. So it doesn't matter which chromosome uh, will arrange itself where. So in a sense, maybe the chromosomes are from your mom will arrange themselves on top and then they will be mixed with the chromosomes of your dad causing your sperm cells to have that combination okay okay so now during metaphase chromosomes arrange themselves at the equator this will result in the creation of different gametes remember the gametes are the sperm cells and egg cells these come from meiosis so now when there are different gametes it means that there will be genetic variation because you know when other sperm cells have got your mom's uh, your mom's skin color and your dad's nose and other gametes have got your dad's skin color and your mom's nose do you see that uh, now there's a difference there are combinations so now that difference is known as variation so random arrangement of chromosomes at the equator leads to genetic variation so this is how meiosis plays a role in genetic variation or just in variation then now let's look at mutations remember that a mutation uh, occurs when there is a change in the structure of a gene so a mutation is just the change in the structure of a gene so remember that the genes are the ones that code for our characteristics for me to be dark skinned it is because i have got genes or a genotype of a dark skinned person Okay, I've got genes of a dark skinned person. For me to have dark hair or nice dark hair, I have got genes of nice dark hair. So genes are the one that cause us to have the physical characteristics that we have. For me to be tall, it is because I've got genes that make me to be tall. Yeah, tall, dark and handsome, something like that. So now, uh, so the thing is, mutations can happen on genes so it just means that the genes can change the structure of the genes can change so my gene structures can change and they become light-skinned okay this is more of a, of a hypothetical situation so now um, if my genes change then it means that i will have a different genotype and remember that the genotype is the one that creates the phenotype or is the one that creates the physical appearance you know the skin color the height the the muscles the um, all of those physical appearances so now if the genotype changes it also means that there will be a creation of a new phenotype so for example if the genes if my genes change their structure and meiosis occurs and then i create a sperm cell in a way okay my body creates a sperm cell the moment i have a baby what will happen my baby will not be the same as me because the genes have changed their structure. So this will lead to a difference between me and my baby. But then we are still the same species. Remember, we're talking about variation. So this is how variation occurs. So this is just how variation occurs. Just need to explain this. Okay, the other thing. The last ones, number three, random fertilization. So remember that during fertilization, the sperm cell and the egg cell fuses. Okay. Yeah, the nucleus of the sperm cell and the nucleus of the ovum or the egg cell will fuse. So this happens randomly. So if you check this diagram, this is my ovum. And then we have got um, mm -hmm. different sperm cells here or our different gametes. So let's just look at this. So we've got one, two, three, four. We've got four sperm cells trying to fertilize the same ovum. So now what happens here? The thing is, the process is random. Which sperm cell will enter the ovum or which nucleus will enter the ovum? It is something random. Fertilization is random. Maybe this sperm cell has got a, a genes of a dark skin. Maybe this one has got a genes of a dark skin. These ones have got a genes of a light skin. Maybe these ones have a genes of a yellow skin or something like that. Maybe this yeah, maybe this one is a yellow bone. Uh, these ones have a gene of maybe I don't know. 
many different types and combinations. So fertilization occurs randomly. So if it happens that this sperm cell is the one that fertilizes this ovum, it means that the baby will be light-skinned. If it happens that this one fertilizes, it means the baby will be dark-skinned. So now do you notice that this happens randomly? So this will result in a difference. As well as a random mating. Random mating, remember that mating is the same thing as copulation or other sexual intercourse. So now it happens randomly. In a way, this is more applicable to humans because uh, as oh, this is more applicable to animals than humans because as humans, we, we tend to be choosy when it comes to our partners. But a uh, random mating, you can see that a, a cow, a cow, and another cow, they just meet and mate. And then after meeting and mating, they create a baby. So that baby will be different. So that's a, that, that's sort of like, that's the variation which you are talking about. Remember, variation is the difference. So now, a random mating just means that two, two species can just mate randomly. So it is not the, because those species do not choose each other. You never see a, a bull I'm talking about a cow, a male cow, a bull going to search for one partner so that they can mate. No. When the bull wants to mate, it will mate with whoever is nearby. So now that random mating will cause a variation or a difference in the species that will be produced. So this is all about um, the evidences of evolution as well as the variation. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. In our next video, we'll be talking about the theories of evolution.